What the fuck is this man doing to me? Doesn't he know that bowing is much more hygienic? This will bring much shame to my family. Elbow bumps are stupid. Poll results, 2021. Throughout 2021, I ran a few polls. Here's the results of a few of them. Let's start with elbow bumping. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison elbow bumping Federal Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. Is this the most ridiculous greeting in history? Take the poll. Is the elbow bump greeting stupid compared to a handshake? Why? 9% of you said, yes, elbow bumps mean I have to lean in close to a person's face. Don't worry, you're not wrong. That's 100% true. If the goal is to avoid a respiratory illness, then obviously you don't want to be close to a person's face. 9% also said, yes, we were told to sneeze into our elbows. Touching elbows? Ew. Isn't it funny that the authorities told us to start sneezing and coughing into our elbows and then use that very same body part to greet each other? You is the operative word. Another 9% said, Yes, handshakes are further apart. I can sanitize hands easily. Hands are one of the most easily sanitized body parts. Surely we're all aware of germs by now. Do we really think that banning handshakes is somehow going to save us from respiratory illness? And the most popular response with 63%, yes, elbow bumps just look stupid and are awkward to do. 9% of us believe that elbow bumps will protect us from viruses and that handshakes are dirty. Actually, one commenter wrote that, Back in medieval times, the king would order two court jesters into the great hall to entertain the guests. The elbow bump greeting was how the two jesters greeted each other in the king's court. Out of interest, I did a search for Jester's elbow bump, and the first picture that popped up was that of the Prime Ministers of Canada and the UK wearing masks and elbow bumping. How fitting. Next poll. I've been hired to do a fact check for Reuters. Which is the leading cause of death in the world today? It turns out that 5% of us think it's something to do with the ongoing pandemic, but the correct answer, which 95% of you got correct, is coronary heart disease. According to Google, there have been 5.4 million deaths in total from the two-year-long pandemic, so let's say 2.7 million deaths per year, with an estimated 17 million people dying from heart disease every year. According to Google's very own disclaimer regarding the data, it notes, Total counts include both confirmed and probable cases in some locations. Probable cases are identified by public health officials and use criteria developed by government authorities. So we just have to remember that the number of deaths attributed to the pandemic are dependent on individual health authorities around the world. Let's face it, many jurisdictions will count any person who tests positive and then dies as a probable case. I would suggest that this means that these numbers are overinflated. In Australian states and territories like countries across the world, the death figures being reported daily are hospital cases where a person dies with the virus infection in their body, given it is a notifiable disease in which all cases must be reported. The virus could be the major cause of death, a contributory factor, or simply an infection present when a person dies of another medical condition. When virus numbers surge, is it a result of more people getting tested? That is, lots of people have the virus but don't know it. They hear about the surge on the news and race out and get tested, resulting in more positive cases and more people getting scared and racing out and getting tested, and so on. 63% of you think yes, it's the large numbers of people getting tested that's driving the surge. 33% of you say that you don't know, and 4% say that the statistics given by the government are accurate. When it comes to vaccination status, 31% of you say that you are double jabbed, 7% triple jabbed, 12% are vaccinated against other things, 27% are pure blood, and 23% told me to mind my own business because it's their private medical information. Have you ever had the illness or know someone personally who's had the illness? 19% of you know somebody personally who's had the illness, 15% of you have had it, and 66% have never had it, nor know anybody who's ever had it. And when it comes to smoking bans, do you agree with New Zealand's plan to ban tobacco? 3% of you are smokers who think the ban is a good idea. 20% of you who are non-smokers agree with them. 13% of respondents who are smokers think we should have the freedom to choose. 
while 64% who are non-smokers completely disagree with the ban. When it comes to building or buying a home, which is better, building a home or buying an existing home? 31% like the idea of building your own home and getting exactly what you want. 45% prefer buying an existing home, it's quick and convenient. While 24% prefer renting or living with their parents. Good luck to anybody planning to buy. The Guardian are reporting, Australian house prices will keep rising and it's truly depressing for those hoping to get into the market. While the barefoot investor warns that Australia's housing bubble is set to burst, I just don't really know anymore. When it comes to certain types of testing, which is your preferred method? 9% of you like the 8-inch nasal swab, 2% like the 10-inch throat swab, a surprisingly high 27% 20 of you like the Chinese anal swab, while 62% of you chose not to get tested. I don't know why. Without testing, how would we know who's sick? And finally, something a bit Christmassy. What's your favourite Christmas food category? At 32%, most of you like roast mammal, 23% like roast vegetables, 19% of you like seafood, 18% like roast bird, and 9% like roast vegan. For those of you who like meat, you better get in fast. The UN are coming after you. Farmers fury over diet push that would cut red meats to 14 grams per day. Is this the end of the road for meat consumption? Apparently, the UN don't like you eating meat because it's causing climate change. It's funny, we let the government dictate what we must inject into our bodies to stop a pandemic, we're letting them tell us what we can and can't breathe in, and now we're going to let them tell us what we can and can't eat. Last poll for 2021. Do governments suck? Yes, governments suck. Or, no, I love government telling me what I should put into my body.